We've all got our own opinions on the best way to remove SMD electrolytic caps, and some of us get very upset when others of us don't do it the way they think is best. I'm quite laid back about these things and really don't care what anyone else does with their own property. Take them off with a string wrapped around a door handle if you like, doesn't bother me a bit, but it also doesn't stop me looking for my own best method to remove these pesky things. When I started out on my vintage computer repairing journey, the first machine I recapped was probably one of the most difficult. The Amiga 1200, I think, is one of those machines that can really trip you up. Whether it's the tough to get to caps behind the keyboard connector, or that the through hole caps are actually the hardest ones on that board for a novice to deal with, the potential for making a mistake is pretty big and not for the faint of heart. Never mind it's one of the more expensive mainstream 16-bit computers to try to collect these days, or even that the one I decided to delve into with little to no experience was my best friend Jason's 1200 from back when we both owned them in the early 90s, and therefore even more precious and irreplaceable. If I was to hand out advice, and I do that with the caveat that you should always do your own research and not trust people on the internet, I would say maybe don't make your first attempt at recapping a computer your childhood best friend's machine. Sorry Jason. I promise I was actually incredibly lucky and it went really fine. Although I've not turned it on in a while. I'm scared to. One of the great things you can do to arm yourself with the most knowledge possible before attempting something foolhardy with old tech is to watch as much on the subject as you can on YouTube. YouTube is where I learned most of what I know. Once you've absorbed all you can, the next step is to practice and work out what's best for you. Again, that's what I did. Every time I recapped a machine with surface mounted electrolytic caps, I learned a little more. I've done a fair few Amiga 600s and 1200s by this point, not to mention a bunch of Game Gears, and until recently, I was never completely convinced that the way I was doing it was the best way. Until now, sort of. Although there is every chance I will change my mind next week. I have here an Amiga 1200. This computer will be the subject of a video in which it gets transplanted into a Checkmate 1500 case and sold to raise money for charity. But this video is not about all of that. Whilst this machine was working and the caps didn't seem to have obviously leaked, it's always a good idea to replace them anyway. And with it being such an important machine, I wanted to make sure it would be in the best condition possible. Recently I've made a couple of repair videos on Amiga 600s, the 1200's little sibling. And whilst making those videos, my journey to a greater desoldering knowledge took a large leap forward after a big nasty shock when some of the pads under the SMD caps decided to detach. I fixed them up nicely and I'm happy with the result. But what I learned that day was hot air was going to be my friend going forwards. I had experimented with different methods. I even tried mechanically twisting them off with pliers just to see what happened. My conclusions were just about every method had its downsides. Let's run through them quickly. Tweezers. Cheap ones are rubbish and good ones are seriously expensive. They also can't fit into every situation, especially on an Amiga 1200 or 600. Two irons. You need to have good hand-eye coordination. They also don't fit in the same places as tweezers don't. Probably more so. It's also easy to slip and melt things with two hands occupied. Twisting. Probably the most contentious method. Works great if the pads are in good condition. Can go horribly wrong if they're not. And let's face it, if you're replacing caps, then the chances are those caps have been leaking and you just don't know what condition the pads are until you remove the cap. Bit of an electrolytic chicken and egg. Another downside is the rage visited upon you by the internet if you show yourself using the twisting method in a video. Snipping. Not with them. Similar problem to twisting. It works better if you cut through the sides of the cap so that both legs are in line with the blades, but there's always going to be some lateral mechanical force going through the pads. It also makes a mess with fish juice escaping all over the board. I've used this method in the past. Most of the time, it was fine. Occasionally, it was not. And so we come to hot air. Hot air is the only one I avoided for the longest time. I'd seen it in other YouTubers' videos being used successfully many times, but I still avoided it for one good reason. I don't like things going bang. 
Having seen this happen to someone else, I discounted it out of hand as something I would just not try. And for the longest time, I didn't. That is until pads started floating off of that A600 recently. When that happened, I had to reevaluate my options and make a decision on how to proceed with the least risk to the remaining pads in that computer. And I had to admit to myself that hot air was the one option with the best chance of a good outcome. Before I get into the meat of this subject, let's just go through the downsides of hot air. As I said earlier, all of these methods have a downside. Hot air is good at gently melting solder. Uh, the trouble is it's also good at melting everything nearby, plastic especially, but also the solder holding other nearby components. It's very easy to knock other components off their pads if you're not careful. Another downside is popcorning. This happens if you quickly heat a small area of PCB too aggressively, leading to the PCB layers delaminating. I did just this in this video. Laminate the area around this cap. So how have I done there? Mm. I just delaminated the board. Fortunately, I got away with it that time and the damage was just cosmetic. It's important to heat a wider area for a short time first and then focus down on the component you want to remove, whilst always moving the heat around. Which brings us onto the big downside for me. Exploding caps. When you heat a canister filled with a liquid well past its boiling point, there is a very good chance that the resulting pressure increase will end with the cap blowing itself to bits, possibly taking the now molten pads or nearby components with it, maybe even landing in your eyeball. I thought about this for a while and wondered, what if you just made it so that can't happen? Which is to say, what if I put a hole in the cap so the pressure can escape? My concerns about trying this were putting a hole in a cap would be similar, but not quite so bad as, say, snipping that cap. Maybe it would require too much force and damage the pads from the pressure exerted. The next one was, what would happen to the electrolytic fluid inside the cap? Would it jet out in a fishy gush, burning a grim and smelly hole in my face? Would it pour out and go all over the motherboard, creating more mess to clean up? Would it blow up anyway? Well, let's find out, shall we? Benchley, take us through it. Well, there's one thing that worries me about, about taking off um, caps with hot air. Now, I just took this one off and I managed to nudge that component. That's one of the problems, but the biggest one for me is caps exploding. I really don't like it. And I'm, I worry about the force of them exploding, causing problems. And I'll probably jump and I might knock a load of components off at the same time. That would be bad. So I've come up with a novel solution. I don't think I've seen anyone do this before, but you can just put a little hole in the top of the cap. And you can actually already see the electrolytic fluid coming out there. And when I did the other one as an experiment, you never seen it like that before. When I did this one as an experiment, it started boiling out the top. Now that's not a problem because it was just boiling away. It wasn't going onto the motherboard. It just literally boiled away. 350 degrees heat immediately on top of it seemed to do the trick. So I'm going to try it again. with the fluid. And my battery just went, I stopped immediately, so I'll start again. It doesn't smell. Yeah, that's a perfectly clean pull. Happy with that. All right, got a whole bunch of them here. These should all just come off at once, so let's get them all pierced. My fear 
was there was going to be a load of electrolytic fluid all over the board when I did this. But that doesn't seem to be the case. It just boils away. And a lot of it just congeals on the actual capacitor. Alright, so I'm going to start with these ones. Oh, I didn't. I don't need to do that. Start with these ones, work my way over to this side as the board gets hot, and then end up down here. I've got to say, that's the quickest I've ever decapped an Amiga 500 or uh, Amiga 1200 or 600. And I'm just doing this just in case there's any electrolytic fluid that's boiled out there and gone on the motherboard. But apart from the, just the normal surface dirt, there doesn't seem to be anything on here. I think I found my new favourite method. These are all in perfect condition. It's a simple solution and I would be amazed if nobody else thought of it first. So if you're currently screaming at your screen that you did this ages ago, by all means let me know in the comments and I'll try to give you credit in future videos. I hope this helps you in your own SMD cap desoldering journey. I better get on with this Amiga. I've got to get this finished in time for the auctions.